Welcome to High Tea with Chantel, elevated conversations with studio owners. Hello everyone and you are in for a treat today. I'm sitting down with one of the most phenomenally inspiring studio owners I know. Her name is Beck Taylor and she's doing huge things in redefining music education here in Australia and she's doing it primarily by making this business absolutely perform for her. We're going to be going into the changes she made in her business model which has created unbelievable growth in her business and you're going to learn how exciting the possibilities are within our industry. I can't wait for you to to hear it. So pour yourself a cup of tea, put your feet up, and uh, let's get started. Hello everyone, it's Chantel here from Studio Expansion and I am so excited to share with you a beautiful cup of tea with my very lovely friend here and client, Beck Taylor. And uh, we're just gonna have a really good chat today and there's a few interesting things that I think that we're gonna share with you that will help you get to another level in your studio as well. So, Beck. Hey. Hello, hello. So, fun fact about Rebecca, um, we actually went through school together and we were um, in choir back yes. in the day. Um, too much fun with uh, Mrs. Griffiths. Mrs. Griffiths. Yeah. We both coach choirs now. We which both, is yes. interesting. So, her legacy is Yeah, on, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> so good. She did inspire us in, in music did. education. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, since, since days of you know, choir, what have you gone on to do with your business these days? Like, tell us about your studio. Um, so I run a music studio yeah. um, that teaches 200 plus families and kids and adults a week. We do contemporary music. Our mission is to redefine music education. Mm. So I started my um, music studio after being a professional performer in the kind of rock and pop industry and being a high school music teacher at the same time, which was interesting. Mm. So there's this whole idea that you have to be a professional musician to be a musician, which is totally not what it is in lots of other cultures. It's very elitist. Mm. So I went, okay, that's weird, because the music industry, my experience here was totally different and it's totally changed. So what are we doing? So I quit Mm. my job and decided to create a school that bridge that gap. So when you say redefining music education, it is more applicable music education, more yes. practically, but like engaging. And so what are like some of the things that you really see shifted from the traditional music education model to where you're seeing kids are really resonating and staying in music? What's important to you in that way? Um, so one of the biggest things is an authentic passion from the teacher right. and an authentic purpose of why we learn music. Mm-hmm. So that's something that I find really important and I've instilled in my staff is that music is for life, music is for joy, music is for becoming a version of yourself that you love mm-hmm. and music can stay with you your whole life. And mm-hmm. if that, in, including creativity, expression, the concept of play, if that is in every lesson, we found that the engagement is so much higher. Yeah, yeah. certainly. And so that would be really, I mean, the foundation of that is who you're hiring. I suppose. Yes, and I've realized this actually through some interviews that Evolution gave me the coaching to do, Mm. which was to interview students and find out exactly what, like the dream student interviews, find out what it is that they love about our school. And I've discovered that it is very much our philosophy and mission, which Mm. I just was talking about. And then also how the teachers are super invested in their students Mm. and super invested in bringing the passion out of the students. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so much about staff. So your number one priority in your job is to lead your team. Yes. And I mean, how did, what what used to be your number one priority? Like what what did you normally, before you kind of had this um, recognition of like what this does to the business? And you know, I think a lot of studio owners out there you know, they're trying to keep their head above water, but the team are kind of like, they're just hoping they're going to take care of themselves. Yeah. What shifted for you and, and like, where were you before in okay. in how you were intentionally running the business? And then like, what was the catalyst that went like, actually, if, if I put my energy here, everything changes. Yeah, and it's so funny to say that because I think there was a, a moment, I think it was a year, a two, almost two years ago now, mm. um, where I suddenly realized that my business isn't about me teaching anymore. Ooh. Oh, and it was a big moment. It was it was a moment where I was like, hang on a minute. 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on. Like, whoa, whoa. If I really want to make this dream music school of like, you know, a huge community of students all thriving over 10 years of coming to the school, I actually realize that the business and the school is entirely in the hands of my teachers. And if I can get them to thrive mm -hmm. and if they're happy and they love their jobs and they love the philosophy and they can see the purpose like I see the purpose, then we're gonna have an amazing music school and my dream is gonna be realized. And then I started scaling back and teaching about a year ago. And since then it's been amazing. And that's kind of, yeah, that's that's when I started thinking like a real leader. And that's when I started hiring more, started marketing, started really thinking about the school as a business rather than just a kind of like me teaching on the side because I loved it. But it was really, it was really good because it made me really think about like what the community needs, what the students need, what I need, what the school needs, what the teachers need. Changes. And I realized that, I don't know, I don't know. We've grown up like in the same place. So I think you have similar, like I have this fear of feeling greedy and being perceived as greedy and being perceived as like, oh, you're taking all the money and the, the uh -huh. teachers get nothing uh -huh. and the teachers work really hard. So I always generous to my teachers always, but I just realized about this time, a year and a bit ago, that if I'm not making a profitable business, if I'm not happy with the income level, then they don't have jobs. Yep, There's no true. community. Mm. There's a, so actually to serve them, I need to serve myself. And also we were cultural, the cultural conditioning of the studio owner industry, like in that kind of the mindset around it is that, you know, you don't do this for money, you do this yeah, for passion. Yeah, you do it, you quit your job and do it because you love it. You do it yeah. for love yeah. and like, you know, you know, what's your real job type of thing? Like the yeah. expectations you do this on the site. Like, and that's what really is, is so devastating that this yeah. is the norm. And so like, not only are we like, think like, do I have the self-worth to pay myself a salary? We're in fact like butting against like an inherent culture, which says no. So yeah. in order for us to, as studio owners, to even get to the place of being comfortable to pay ourselves a wage, we have to do so much emotional yep. lifting, right? And that's why it is hard. And there are studio owners out there who, who you know, are kind of like, this is a business and I'm going to get paid. But for me, I, what we see, the majority... The majority, it's sad. Are not there yet. I know. And it, this pill has been amazing for that because I, ha I didn't really realise that until... Because I was really happy with my like sixty-five thousand dollars salary, to speak frankly. Yeah. Like including super, I was like, and I've been paying myself that for about eighteen months now. Yeah. And I've been like, amazing, because that was the same as what I was getting as a teacher, uh -huh, right? right? So I was like, well, that's replaced, my rate. I've replaced that's my rate. It. That's what I'm worth. That's where I belong, right? That's my ceiling. And it's not where I belong. No, Chantel. I <laughs> know. Everybody. Mm-hmm. I deserve more than that. So, so it's like it's, it's, it's the it's not an and or it's a it's no. an and and yeah. I can do what I love and I can yep. earn a good salary doing it. But I think it's just people don't have the clarity of how to to get there. Yeah, like, that's the hard bit. You know, it's seeing how the the business model, like the program suite, the like the 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 variety of programs you're bringing people into, how you're packaging them, how you're pricing them and building in profit margins there and then how you are structuring like the capacity in the classrooms and minimum like it's yeah, all, all of these stuff. yeah it's it's there's there's so many factors that it's like a beautiful puzzle that yeah. is the secret to profitability it's not just raise your prices because you can you know be making more money but there's still if you're not kind of prioritizing profit you just still you can't yeah you just right? spend it on something else it just gets yeah spent. it just gets spent or you hire someone else because you got money yeah yeah that's the thing. So it's for me, it's that very much a, a product of really getting clear on, okay, well, what actually do I need? If I want to earn $100,000 as a studio owner, which I feel, I feel <laughs> needs to be the standard, yep. you know, we've got a club in the studio, uh, studio evolution. We're like, we're wanting to get people into the 8% club. So, you know, recently yep. I did that survey across the industry and I surveyed studio owners across the world, what they pay themselves in the last financial year as their salary. And the results were staggering, staggering. Um, to give you an idea, like twelve percent of the industry isn't paying themselves anything. Oh my god! And you think about how they're That's... working hours and oh, hours. So much work. Yeah, and like away oh. from their kids, away from yeah. their house, and so like the hubby is expected to subsidise. You know. Right. Yeah. With... Like it's just expected. I don't bring money into the studio, into the home, but my husband yeah. earns a good wage, so I'll just kind of it's like, yeah. uh, uh, ladies, yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, that's not okay. But eight percent of the studio are owning. Uh, eight percent of studio owners are earning over a hundred thousand dollars, 
and it's it seems like that is the sweet spot. Like yeah. the data showed that once you get to a hundred thousand, you can earn pretty much whatever you want. Like okay. most of you owners doing one hundred fifty cool. three hundred thousand yeah. dollars. It's just getting getting you, to that a hundred. Yeah, if you can get the if you can get the business model right to get to a hundred grand, you're you're pretty secure going forward. And we oh, know that like there's that. there's exponential. So it's like get in the club. That's what we're working I'm, on. I'm working and I'm working on it, and I'm really excited to work on it. You know, I, like I'm excited to get there. I reckon it's pretty much like with the work we're doing in evolution right now, it's, it's probably like 18 months. That's kind of like the time, 18 months, two years. It's not going to happen overnight. No. But, but there are a lot of factors that kind of come in from retention to yes. how we've got the marketing strategy in place and the, the team kind of really getting them on yeah. board. And then also it's like, you know, it's kind of working up here just the, the yeah. actually, you know, setting the amount in your online banking to pay yourself. Like there's a lot of factors that come together. Yeah. But then you, like your life is transformed. There. So like looking back at your younger self, that your beautiful <laughs> younger self, and like when you were running the studio and you were doing all the things, like what, like what would you go back and say to her? Uh, I would say to younger Beck, you could do it. Stop kind of doubting yourself. Like you've got the potential to do it. You just need to believe that you can do it. Mm -hmm. I've recently had a bit of a blip in losing an admin and having to do the admin myself the last two weeks. Doesn't that hurt? Oh, but it's been really good because it's made me realize that my decisions a year, two years ago to delegate the stuff that I didn't love doing, that I knew that was kind of not great use of my time. It's not my kind of, what do you call it? Like your genius zone. Yeah, your genius zone. It wasn't my genius zone. And I made decisions quite early, like earlier than probably most studio owners to delegate as much as possible. And I am actually a great delegator. I love delegating. I love watching people do well. I don't get control freak. I'm not a control freak at all. Mm. Um, and I wanted to, I would tell my younger self that like those decisions are great. Go you. And I feel like the only reason that I'm here today with the success so far is because of those decisions of like delegating and up skilling others to do the jobs that I started off doing. It's so interesting. It's amazing. It's so yeah. interesting. And like I see it every single day in evolution. Like a studio owner will like decide to like cut their teaching load by 15 hours a week. Yeah. Or they will yeah. decide to hire an admin. Or they will decide to do something else. Like they'll take themselves out. Yeah. And the results go like this. That's it. It's like you have to, once you extricate yourself from being this, the, yeah. actually everything opens. It's, it's yeah. unbelievable. And so it's kind of like when you know that, it's kind of like, okay. Like, right, and I kind of knew that, but I, I did it instinctively because I just like I always knew that t my time was the most valuable thing. Yeah, but now that I have had to do admin for two weeks on top of my job, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, how? Like, I would not be here if I had to do that because I just can't do anything else. Yeah, I have like an hour a day where I could do something thinking about the marketing, thinking about how, oh, that teacher's retention isn't great. How can I make sure that, mm. you know, like all that stuff that I usually do, yeah. I, I just can't do. So it's super interesting. That almost is, I reckon, the, the most important thing that I've done the last few years possibly is to extricate myself out of the, those jobs that I thought was really important. But mm. actually, other people are better than me. And I love that. It, it, it's mm. super interesting that that CEO, CEO role, which I've kind of like been stepping into the lot since pretty much since evolution. Since we, we required it. Months, since you guys were like, you're a CEO. I'm like, what? <laughs> yes. oh, what? what? Yes. Here's your badge. <laughs> yeah. Here's your name plug. Yeah. It's like, oh, It's okay. official now. You're allowed. <laughs> I'm allowed to be a CEO. And, and only since then have I really started to realize how powerful that my role is and my standing in the community and those little things that mm. like I'm judging the music video short film festival at the moment like how important those connections are and those you know the little things that the CEO does because that's super good for the brand and for right. the community. You're not, you're not the sh you know the, the schlepping doing just yeah. everything everything this is where you lead. This is where you lead and that's leadership. And, and that's where we you, you're creating you know you're redefining music education because you're creating a culture an experience a highly systemized yes. highly wreckable machine like you're building yeah. a machine and like this will just run and run yeah. and get better and better and better. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's in the growth in 14 months you've seen in your business and like I, I do believe so wholeheartedly like you're not even seeing what's ahead like you're still in this kind yeah, of like, the dust hasn't not, even settled, no it hasn't you know? it's been really fast growth it's kind of scary yeah, yeah. 
And so when and when then when you have even the mindset when you're not in such creation mode, there is that stage of like you're still right now doing the architecture and you're putting yes, the pieces still. to the puzzle. Yeah. And there's still, you know, we've still got a couple of pillars of evolution yet to kind of bring it all together. But then once that curates into form, you've got all the all the machine in place, that's when you have the headspace to scale. Yeah. And that's where I get really excited awesome. for you because I see the vision and what you've built is so scalable. And there is power in the consolidation of getting all the pieces in the mm. place. You've done all the thinking. You've got all of the inten intentionality. Yeah. So that when that just like, and you then, then you've got energy to take it to That's, however big you want yeah. to go. Yeah. That's true. I do feel like I'm still definitely in the, in the, in the arena. And it's you know? nice place to be. <laughs> It is because it's so vol. It's so like um, it's so much energy all the time. It's like constantly growing and creating. And creating. It's yeah, the most it is. creative stage of it your is. business. Yeah, it is. It really is creative. the most creative and intellectually stimulating. It, yeah, right? it is. It's totally never a dull moment. And no. and actually, the goal for this year was that at the beginning of the year, I set some goals for the business, and one of them was really consolidate the business model, mm -hmm. and one of them was don't grow until. Yes. Don't grow intentionally until yes. we've like totally nailed what, you know, retention. We've totally nailed what the bandmates group program is and what the vocal crew model mm -hmm. is and mm -hmm. like, and how the business model is going to serve the community and like. Well, you're team. at waitlist for private lessons. Though, we've totally, what, yeah, we're waitlist. Yeah, yeah, we're full in private lessons. So now it's groups and how yeah. do we, and we raise the prices, which has been totally fine, yeah. by the way, <laughs> studio just, owners. <laughs> Just We're charging fifty dollars a private lesson at the moment. I love it. I love and it's it. like people don't even question it. And like, there's so much fear around it. But when you create, so much fear. The, the thing is that you, the reason it's easy for you, right, is because you have put so much care yes. and love into curating the team. The team and yep. the experience yes. that you have such congruence. Like I know why this is more expensive. Yeah. Well, not even this. I know why this is just good value for that price. It's actually not even yes. like, it's not even that, it's actually yeah. like what you're going to, I know what you're going to, the value you're going to get from this is going to blow you away and you're going to love it so much. It's going to be more than $50 value. Exactly. That's it, so, yeah. So you've done, the, the creativity you've brought in has actually given you such a grounding of, I know I can charge whatever I want. If yeah. you wanted to charge $65, you probably would be like, take you a while, be like, no, I can see it's worth that. And I know what I need to do in myself, in my heart to hold that value. Yeah. It would be worth this amount. Yeah. That's the power because you believe it's it. So true. <laughs> and look, I think the, the you know going back to that concept of the controlled growth, I love that. I love it because when you're in design stage, it's really and I know probably studio owners who've been running their businesses and they have you know six seven hundred students and they've got it's harder to pivot then. Yeah. It, it is easier to especially while we're getting we're getting all the marketing locked in, we're getting the retention strategy built in, we're getting the team how the communication works. Like there is power in agility and being yeah. able to just kind of play with this so yeah. much um and so it is lovely to just like i know like you have might have a vision for being in in multiple states you know we've got clients who do that but right now if i get the prototype that's it this proven, is the prototype mm, then you can do whatever you want this is the stamp like is it gonna work and i i know that it will it already is working yeah. so i just want to make it the best music school in the world. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I love her. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's, that's what I want. I want it to be the best. <laughs> why? Why is it important to you to be the best in the world? Because I think music education is living in the 1950s and we need to serve our community by bringing the joy of music back to mm. people. So for me, it's like, well, private sector. Yeah. That's, that's right. where I can have power. Mm -hmm. It's like build my own thing. That's why like, I loved you guys. When I found you guys, I'm like, Oh my God, you have that same kind of vision for the arts industry, like private rely. sector. We can't rely. Kids and the kids are going to miss out on arts education unless studio that's owners it. step in to fill in that role in the community. That's it. And yeah. that's kind of what drives me in music. And mm. I kind of feel like what that's why I'm here on earth. You know, that's my purpose in existing mm. kind of thing is to kind of drive this in my way that I can. So that's private sector. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you are such an inspiration and like we're just seeing a fraction of what you're going to accomplish in this industry. And I'm really proud to be by your side as we do that. So thank you well, for thank sharing you. your love. Thank you your for wisdom. all your help. <laughs> you An evolution. I could not be elevated 
into this, which is only like part two of my career, I feel, mm. without ev- without evolution, you know what I mean? Well, the thinking we're seeing you do and the, the courage, mm. the courage is what's so inspiring. I mean, like, you, you know, especially when it came to that business model stage, like we kind of like, okay, here's what I want you to think about. And then you went like, see it. Got it, run it. Yeah, <laughs> done. <laughs> right? That's what I'm a, like. I'm a I'm a fast thinker, yeah. but unless I've got kind of that in, inspiration in front of me, I won't. I I just need that understanding. Mm. And once I've got that understanding, it goes. Oh, that makes sense. Obviously, I'm going to do that. <laughs> like, yeah. But you guys are so good at getting me to that thinking place, mm-hmm. and that's what I need because otherwise, I just do all the things and get bogged down in the work yeah. but I need that like elevation you and you guys are just awesome at that well we we care a lot about seeing you guys thrive so yeah. it's, it's really it's very fulfilling for us to watch you just absolutely rocking it in in every way in every <laughs> way well Beck Taylor thank you so much <laughs> that's all right you. and uh, we will see you next time for more chats over tea mm-hmm. bye ready to join us apply now at studioexpansion.com forward slash evolution apply.